And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. And good day to you. God bless you. Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're ready to get back in our Father's Word. We're going to start with chapter 4, verse 28. And the subject as we pick it up here is um, you've got to have faith when you ask for something. And a prophet among his own is without honor. And he spoke of, um, of Elijah and Elias and how that they were sent just to a few because it was just a few that had belief, all right? <clears throat> and um, uh, so he had taught this after teaching the gap theory in, in his own. So let's just pick it up there with no more uh, explanation. Verse 28, chapter 4, great book of Luke, meaning light giver, and it reads, um, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. What kind of a church have we got going here? I mean, what kind of church is it that turns to wrath so easily? Especially with one a man just quoting the Bible. Does the Word of God offend them that much? If they're not taught, it does, and I think no more need be said. Verse 29, And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of a hill, uh, right on a cliff, whereon their city was built that they may cast him down headlong. They wanted to kill him. I mean, you know, nothing like a good church service, huh? Um, and people being just a little bit closed-minded, but that's the way people are. If they're not well taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse, and um, so be it. Verse 30. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. He had the power through the Holy Spirit simply just to walk away, and he did. There wasn't anything they could do about it. 31. And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. Capernaum means compassion, and Galilee means circuit, okay? And uh, taught them on the Sabbath days. 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Not maybe on this hand or maybe on that hand, but direct right on, yes, no, that's the way it is. That's the way people like to learn God's word, not, well, according to this dear brother, this is the way it is, but then on the other hand, according to this brother, that's the way it is, and my opinion is, what about God's opinion? Why not go to it, stay there, teach it, yes, no, no getting out of the traces, stay head on. That's teaching with boldness, and that's the way people love to be taught. Okay, verse 33. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice, now, it, this is really something, isn't it? I mean, you might expect, according to some preachers, to find an unclean spirit in some old boy down here in the corner bar. But, I mean, here we got one right in church. Satan can do more good with his little evil spirits right from a pulpit through preachers than he can any other way by false teaching, misleading. And I'm not saying that all preachers have a bad spirit, but there, there are some that have a spirit of, uh, well, I wouldn't be judging them, but uh, if you don't teach God's Word straight on and you start teaching traditions of men, pretty soon you're going to invite in a lot of outside help, and it won't be helpful. Verse 34, saying, this is what the evil spirit said out of the man's mouth right there in church saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? They sure didn't have any trouble knowing who he was. Art thou come to destroy us? Question. They asked because they knew he had the authority to do it. I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. You see, demons, as they come to earth to possess man, that Satan's evil spirit, as well as his little darlings, his helpers, they knew who Jesus was. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father, Emmanuel, God with us. 
and they knew who they were dealing with, and they knew that he had power over them. They also knew that if he sent them back where they came from, it meant death. And that scared them. That's why that evil spirits will be afraid of you. If you practice the, uh, the um, power and authority that Christ will uh, extend to you in the 10th chapter of this great book of Luke, don't miss it. He doesn't leave us helpless. They knew who he was. Verse 35, and Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace, you keep your mouth shut and come out of him. It wasn't time yet for that declaration. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he just couldn't help himself, could he? He came out of him and hurt him not. Just um, the power of simply saying, come out of there. So he did. Verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what a word is this? I mean, there's no telling how many preachers would try to cleanse him, to help him. And here this man simply speaks and he's gone. For with authority and power, he commandeth the unclean spirits and they come out. Why? Because he was Messiah. He was Yeshua. And, and as I stated, the evil spirits knew that. They recognized him. Verse 37, and the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. What kind of fame do you think it was that went out? It was the fame of the fact that he drove that demon out. That he could just put his hands on people and they were healed. They weren't used to that. They didn't understand that. The fame wasn't that he was, the fame that went out wasn't that he was Messiah, Yahweh's Savior, but the very deeds that he did documented that he was. And the time will come when it will be declared. 38. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house, that'd be Simon Peter. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. Simon Peter was married, and uh, his mother-in-law was right there with them. Verse 39, and he stood over her. Now, stood over is a medical term, again, documenting that Luke is a medical doctor, using medical terminology, leaving his thumbprint on the manuscripts. And rebuked the fever. And it left her, and immediately he arose and ministered unto them. Now, I want to say a word here that it would seem that some ministers get a little confused that uh, anything that is wrong with a person is demonic. Now, did Christ cast an evil spirit out of uh, Peter's mother-in-law? Of course not. Why? She didn't have one. She had a fever. She was running a high temperature. Okay. So uh, I want to draw the distinction that Christ can heal sickness and he can also control Satan and evil spirits. It's two totally separate things. You know, we have... Um, uh, through childbirth and many other places, we have injuries that will bring on epilepsy, seizures. And uh, you've got a lot of preachers running around making hay saying this is an evil spirit in their ignorance. And they're trying to drive an evil spirit out of somebody that simply has an injury and, and making fools out of... I wish I could say just themselves, but many Christians, because they don't know what they're doing. They don't utilize common sense. Now, I, I think it's very important this, that this point be taken very seriously, because Luke, who promised you in the first four verses of this book that he was going to be very concise, that this medical doctor is taking great 
pains to draw a distinction between the evil spirit and a, and a sickness, okay? And you got, if you're going to be a helper of people, you must have discernment. You must have a spiritual discernment whereby if there be an evil spirit, you can feel it a mile away. Well, give or take. I, I will guarantee you, if you have a person that has strong discernment, they don't even have to be looking. They can be in a room near the front and a person with an evil spirit can walk in the back and they will know it. They will feel it. Okay? And uh, there's not one behind every bush, but that's just discernment from Almighty God, spiritual discernment. Don't confuse the two and always use common sense and protect your credibility. It's very important, all right? Uh, enough said. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 40, I believe it is, and it reads, Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. This was a great time because um, there's always a reason. And uh, I guarantee you the only reason was they had faith to know he could do it. When he brought them there, he wouldn't have healed them, okay? His, um, uh, verse 41, and devils also, separate deal, okay? Devils also came out of many crying out and saying, thou art Christ, the son of God. And he rebuked them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Christ being Christos, meaning the anointed one, meaning Messiah. And it, was, it just wasn't quite time for that declaration. I mean, quite frankly, uh, until he hadn't even chosen all of the disciples yet. His ministry is just beginning. And, and of course, these demons knew they knew who he was. And, um, and he simply told them, keep your mouth shut. And they obeyed, don't worry. They knew who they were messing with. You see, when God said to the Elohim angels, he and his children, let us make man in our, not your, our image, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, was made in the very image of God, just as you are made in the image of the entity you were there. Now that may seem a little heavy. If it does, put it on the shelf. But this is why they would know him, because he looked exactly like the Father. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. And what did the Father say to call him? Emmanuel, God with us. And so he was. That explains this power, authority. And, um, you know, uh, you have a lot of, uh, it, this was not one of these things where you call a big healing meeting and you get a bunch of hypochondriacs show up. I mean, they'll, you know, you can lay a trip on them uh, and they're jumping around, but the real injured and sick, they turn away. You don't want them up there. It's kind of sad, but here we have the real thing. We have he that has the power to heal. Now, I'm not knocking people, and I didn't say all healing ministries do that. You be the discerner yourself, all right? 42. Uh, the next verse, 42, reading, And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him, that he should not depart from them. I mean, we got a good doctor. We got somebody that can heal everybody. He can handle the devil. Let's don't let him get away. Verse 43, and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore am I sent. In other words, Satan's control of the world was, was and still to this day, uh, he has that power and authority as the prince of darkness. The only thing that will dispel that darkness is to turn a light on, and that light is Christ, and Luke, the light giver, is teaching that very fact. 44, 
and he preached in the synagogues of Galilee. He didn't hide. He didn't call some little secret meeting out here, have some clique running around. He went right into the center of the church and taught there, and they listened because he taught with authority. Chapter 5, verse 1, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, which means circuit, okay, to, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. I mean, they'd had a bad night. They'd been fishing all night, hadn't caught a thing. And this happens to, you know, Peter was a commercial fisherman. And this is his group, verse 3. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, that's to say Peter, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. In other words, the throng and the press was so great, but it has been proven uh, through uh, history, archaeology, that the location probably where this took place, when you push a small boat off from the shore, it, there is a natural uh, amphitheater there where a voice can just carry to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So he's looking for this platform to push off so that he can teach. But his main uh, reason, one of his main reasons, is to induct Simon into service. It's time to gather in the disciples, okay? Verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, it's through teaching here, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. Let, let them down out there for a haul, okay? Verse 5, And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing, not a zippo. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. He said, um, what, what Peter's kind of saying here is, uh, look, uh, Lord, I'm, I'm a professional. I, I be a commercial fisherman. I know my job. I've been out there fishing all night. We've been hitting it, I mean hard. There's nothing out there. But if you say so, I mean, he could see the authorities, but if you say so, I'll do it. Well, that's kind of neat in a way that, that a professional was willing to give way to Christ, wouldn't you think? There's just one thing he didn't know at that time. This was Messiah, and he controlled fish also, okay? Verse 6. And when they had this uh, done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break, or it was in the, about to break. It was in the process. It was stretching out seven and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. They were in the process. They were a little greedy, weren't they? Well, I suppose that's kind of mankind, and you might as well expect it, okay? And I suppose in another way, if they've all been out there empty-handed all night and all of a sudden they're blessed from above, they're, uh, they're going to make hay while the sun shines, right? Verse 8, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now, here you kind of can see the inside Peter's soul a little bit here. I mean, and being a professional, he knew there was nothing out there, but he knew that this was a divine 
inflection, a divine interference by Almighty God, that they were blessed. And this was not just an ordinary man that had approached. And Peter just simply fell down and asked him to not be with him because he wasn't perfect. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you know anybody that is? Do you, do you know anybody that's perfect aside from Christ and our Father? I don't think so. You're going to find a few that think they are. They'll even tell you they are, okay? Well, when you start checking out, you find they come, they kind of maybe that some of their thought is a little self-righteous. and But I, I like this in Peter, that he didn't feel worthy because I, I know there are times that I felt that in my life that God's blessings were so great that I did not feel worthy. And that's what's coming from Peter here, verse 9. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the drop of the fishes which they had taken, he even controls the sea. I mean, this was awesome. 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. They were all in the fishing business. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And he was letting him know that through Christ and with Christ, your catch would always be exactly what God wished for or wanted, willed. 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. I mean, they just, uh, when, he, when he indicated follow me, they did, he, he didn't hold a revival. They didn't counsel with somebody. They went, ready to serve, awe-stricken by the presence of God through the Son. Verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, listen carefully, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, um, do, do you catch the voice of this leper? What, what has he declared here? When he said, if thou if he had said, maybe you could, Jesus would have just kept walking. But he didn't say, maybe. He said, if thou wilt. He said, I know you can. I have all the faith in the world to know that you can touch me. And this is gone. So what do you see in that faith, of course? What are you to learn from it? You've got to have faith, friend. You can't be a doubting Thomas and expect uh, many blessings from God uh, the easy way. And that is to say for him simply to astonish you. Otherwise, uh, you're going to earn it. Verse 13. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. It's gone. 14, and he charged him to tell no man. It wasn't time for his power and authority to be known yet. But go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. In Leviticus 14, 4, You'll read what was required. I'll cut it down to the fact that he was to take two birds. One of the birds would be killed, and the blood of that bird would be placed on the other bird, and then that bird would be set free. And standing before him was Messiah, who would shed his blood on the cross, and under that blood, we are set free today of our sins, of our wickedness, forgiveness for that on remission. And uh, this is why he said, you go to the priest and show him that. Well, would a priest be intelligent enough to put two and two together? Probably not. But um, 
uh, that's what Jesus required. At least they were warned. Verse 15. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him for their infirmities. Um, so um, the fame went out. Why? Do you think that was kept quiet? No. Uh, I'm sure after uh, he, he was so overjoyed he couldn't help sharing it, no doubt, after he took the birds to the priest. I don't imagine the priest was too impressed, okay? Uh, probably thought, well, maybe I did it myself, the priest would. Night 16. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Um, even he prayed and meditated, thought about things, you know, prayer is to commune with the Father, and and in as much as He was in the Father, even do you ever, don't you ever meditate to yourself? You can kind of gain a lot of wisdom. I like to say every once in a while the term meditate comes from the cow chewing her cud. That's the etymology of the word. That a cow has more than stomach than one. And they got to take in that grub while the grub is there. And then after they lay down, they swallow this cud down into a stomach and pick up some of the uh, juices and then uh, chew the cud to digest the food. Okay, this when you take in truth, you got to you got to chew that uh, truth and and uh, think on it and meditate on it and put it away into the cells of your mind. Whereby, um, whereby it doesn't leave. You've got that memory of it. So um, just a little explanation of why he prayed, okay? 17, and it came to pass, and, and also out of loyalty to Almighty God. Okay, 17, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, oh, oh, we got trouble now. I mean, anytime you get a bunch of religious doctors and religionists, you better be careful. Of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. I mean, we got, we got the uppity duck, muckety ducks from downtown here. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Um, now, what they're actually doing is they're trying to entrap him. And at the same time, by this time with this fame going out, you know, it's kind of maybe disturbing some of their congregations, their inflow. And they're probably saying, we better get down and check this dude out and get a line on him. He's going to hurt our ministries. Seems the people are drawing to him more than us. 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. That means he was paralyzed. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. There was a crowd there. You couldn't get in the front door. A, a poor man's bed is, is what we would call a pallet today so that you can better understand this. 19. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Now, now what does this say? Do you know what it means when they let him down through the time? They had to tear the roof up. I mean, they had to make a place in that roof to let him down. That's trouble, friend. Which documents what? Faith. They, they wouldn't tear a roof up if they didn't have faith to know he was going to be healed once they got him down there. I mean, they had faith in this operation. They felt it was worthwhile. Therefore, they exercised that faith. To, uh, to lower him down at that time. Verse 20, And when he saw their faith, that's what I mean, it was obvious, he said unto him, Man, uh, thy sins are forgiven thee. 
Now, you want to absorb that. He didn't say you're healed. He said your sins are forgiven. Who can forgive sins? Only God. This is, this is going to cause trouble. 21. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? 22. And when Jesus perceived their thoughts, I mean, he, he's the heart knower. He knows your mind. He knows what you're thinking. He answered, answering, said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? He's, he's just about to burn them good, beloved, okay? I mean, I mean, this man is paralyzed. He can't move. But because of the faith, he told him, your sins are forgiven. I'm sure he was in his mind asking. It was his right to give it, 23. Whither is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, rise up and walk? 24. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, that one that was paralyzed, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. You pick up your bed and you walk home. Now he's just forgiven the man's sins. Now there's none of these other preachers there that could heal the man. I mean, we're talking about power and we're talking about authority. We're talking about getting it done. 25. And immediately he arose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. That's sure better than the rest of them did. Okay. Sure a lot better than the rest of them did. 26. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Actually, the word strange means we've seen awesome, awesome things today. And they had. They had seen the work and the hand of Almighty God with his children. And that's why you always want to remember it's such a wonderful promise when he has promised you, I will never leave you nor will I ever forsake you. And you can leave him if you want to. And a lot of people do. They get so far away from him that uh, they almost lose contact. But it's you that left him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He has the power that when you earn what it is that you ask for in his will, it's going to be done. If you have that faith, that's the lesson he wants you to learn from this. Have faith, my friend. Have faith in your own Father, Almighty God, that he loves you, that he cares. Do you know something? He wants the very best for you. See that you receive it. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you?